please welcome Tony DiTerlizzi and Holly Black. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Michigan. Yeah. yeah. You guys came out on a school night too. That's awesome. <laughs> Thanks, mom and dad. You guys, you guys can write the letter. My son and or daughter did not do their homework last night because they were at Borders, rocking with the Spiderwick people. <laughs> I am Holly Black. I'm Tony DiDolizzi, it's good to meet you. <laughs> we're very, very happy to be here. Thanks for coming out, guys, seriously. Um, we're so excited. We have, um, normally they, uh, they, being our publisher, sends us out on these long tours across the country to go out and uh, read Spiderwick and talk about Spider Chronicles. And we uh, actually have been so busy um, working on new Spiderwick books uh, uh, going out and promoting the movie and stuff that we haven't really done a, a, like a book signing talk event thing in a while. So yeah. we actually sat down and planned something. We've never really done this. We've kind yeah. of put this all together just so for you guys. So if it's a little, yeah, <laughs> you'll understand. So, so if we don't, if you don't, if we don't know what we're doing, it's because we don't know what we're doing. No. Um, <laughs> So we kind of put together this whole like crazy kind of thing for you guys that we thought be something you'd be really into. We're gonna we're gonna talk a little bit about Spiderwick books. We're gonna talk about the new Spiderwick books, and then um, I actually was able to uh, uh, show you guys like backstage photos of the movie as it was kind of being produced. So I thought it'd be really cool to kind of show you guys uh, some of the talk about the movie process mm -hmm. a little bit and, and our experience with it. And then if we're lucky, we'll do some some Q and A and. Yeah. and We'll just go until they kick us out and they <laughs> flick the lights off and on. But you guys get your lighters out and you're like, no, we want in. And we'll just see how it goes. All right, so um, Spiderwick. <laughs> so, <laughs> how many of you guys have read the original five book Spiderwick Chronicles? Okay, well for those who haven't, I'm gonna give you a quick summary. So there's three kids, Jared, Simon, and Mallory Grace, and they move from New York to upstate New England to their great great uncle Arthur Spiderwick's house, and weird things start to happen. And Jared becomes convinced that these weird things have something to do with his great great uncle Arthur Spiderwick's field guide to the fantastical world around, around you, which he finds. And uh, in, in the process of convincing his brother and sister to believe him, he also comes to realize that these creatures want the field guide back. Uh, or just to have it inaccessible, or <laughs> want to destroy it, or destroy him and all of them. <laughs> and chaos ensues. Yes. And that's pretty much the plot of the first five, <laughs> the first five books. <laughs> now, you know, you're good. Um, <laughs> well done. Nice. Very good. Good summary. Thank you. Yeah, that's good. Should we read the letter we got from the Grace Kids? I remember that, that we kind of were at a bookstore signing, and okay. we received a letter from them that kind of set this whole thing in motion. <clears throat> Dear Mrs. Black and Mr. Dieter Lizzie, I know that a lot of people don't believe in fairies, but I do, and I think that you do too. After I read your books, I told my brothers about you, and we decided to write. We know about real fairies. In fact, we know a lot about them. The page attached to this one is a photocopy from an old book we found in our attic. It isn't a great copy because we had some trouble with the copier. The book tells people how to identify fairies and how to protect themselves. Can you please give this book to your publisher? If you can, please put a letter in this envelope and give it back to the store. We will find a way to send the book. The normal mail is too dangerous. We just want people to know about this. The stuff that has happened to us could happen to anyone. Sincerely, Mallory, Jared, and Simon Grace. And the book that they're talking about is our, the field guide. Yes, Arthur Spiderwick's field guide. So as Holly said, we, um, we did the first five Spiderwick books, and they were about this field guide. Does everybody here know what a field guide is? Most field guides tell you about different types of animals or, or plants and trees, about things that live around us. They're usually about birds, butterflies, and insects. And, um, and there's, I'm sure there's quite a few of them in, a, in uh, this store. But Arthur Spiderwick's field guide was a little different in that he claimed he could see animals like, let me find a good one, Hold, hold for it, it's coming. Oh, I know a good one, hold on, hold on. Here, you can grab the other end. 
This North Atlantic sea serpent. Ooh, exhibit A. Complete with a deep sea diver in his, in his gullet. So Arthur Spiderwick. Let's show one more native to this, this area. Oh, and what which do one do you have in mind? Well, perhaps. Mm. The Bogart. Ah. Very worrisome. Very yes. worrisome creature. So have any of you maybe seen anything like this? Whoa. Oh. Uh, see? Native to this area. Yes. All the fairy doors. So we were, you know, we told the five tales Bogarts. of the <laughs> We told the five tales of the great the five books of the Grace Kids and how they found this field guide. And we were just, I mean honestly, Holly, I mean I remember we were working on this. We thought, wow, this field guide, I think kids might like it. They may think it's kind of cool, you know, it's it's different. We know? like it. <laughs> we liked it. We had no idea that the Spiderwick stories and the field guide would be so well loved and received by kids and adults. I came from, um, I know Holly, you're very, very well read. I had a little trouble reading actually when I was around nine or 10 years old. Um, I, I, some reason, because I like to do a lot of art, I used a lot of pictures to kind of help me comprehend what was going on in a book. And so we thought it would be really cool to kind of have the Spiderwick books be not simpler or, or dumbed down for younger readers, but simply just be a little smaller, a little less daunting, and have lots of pictures in them to maybe help uh, the reader understand or comprehend what was going on. So we were blown away to, 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 to see the successes of the books, so much so that, what? I just want to say, in defense of people who read big, thick books, we also <laughs> like pictures. Yes. So it's no, it's no drawback to us. No. It's not like we're like, oh, well, we can read a big, thick book, forget those pictures. <laughs> just put that out there. That's good. We were fortunate enough to be able to actually do sequels, and I think it came from a similar kind of thing, like with the Grace Kids. Remember, we were getting, we took our red yeah, book around. Yeah, um, when we when we went out on tour, you you see our surprise when you raise your hands, but in fact, it, it is something that is a continuous surprise to us. How many times we'll go somewhere and say, "Well, has anyone had any experiences with fairies?" And you know, kids and adults will say, "Yes." So Let me tell you what has happened, you know, to me. Let's pull this audience. Has anyone here had any experience with fairies? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't think, we, we never expected that we would meet so many people who had had these experiences. And so one of the things that we wanted to think about when we started Beyond the Spiderwick Chronicles was um, reversing some of the expectations of the original series. Uh, I think there's a certain you know old Victorian house, hidden book in New England that feels like, okay, maybe fairies are there, but that's, you know, maybe, maybe they're only there. And we wanted to make it clear that, you know, there are fairies everywhere. There are fairies all over the world. There's fairy folklore from all over the world. And so we put the new series in a somewhat more unlikely place. It is in Florida. Um, the kids live in a shiny new development. Mm -hmm. And the field guide that gets them into so much trouble is a field guide that was purchased by um, one of the kids, Lori, at the bookstore, just like your field guide. And Hopefully, you know, this will show our readers that if you're very, very unlucky, the <laughs> things that happen to these kids could also happen to you. Yes. <laughs> so we are, um, we're also here, we're very excited, obviously, about the, uh, being ha having the opportunity to do the Spiderwick uh, sequel, but also we're super duper excited about the upcoming Spiderwick Chronicles, the movie. You can see the logo. Yes. The Macy's Day float. The Happy Meal. <laughs> <laughs> um, We're very excited. We are very excited. We have, we've seen the movie actually a couple times. Um, we were uh, And it's great. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. yes. We really, really liked it, which, you know, I and, can say that completely sincerely. I think they really captured, you know, who the characters were and, and you know, what Spiderwick's about. Um, a lot of people ask us uh, if stuff changed from the books. To the film, and we can tell you, of course, stuff changed from the books to the film. You have five little books that each have their own little plot. They connect together to form one giant large plot. And a film is traditionally structured like a play. So you have a three-act structure, and they have to tell it all in about 90, 96 minutes or something like that. So there's a lot of great sequences in it that are right from the books. There's a couple things they had to fudge around in order to make the movie work. But we were very, very pleased with it. It has a lot of the characters from the books. They literally wanted to cram every single character from all five books in there. But the movie would have cost a <laughs> billion, zillion, million dollars more than it cost. <laughs> so um, 
I wanted to show you a couple things. Um, we were involved right from the beginning with the mm -hmm. film. We sat down with the director, Mark Waters, who had just come off making a movie called Mean Girls. And he loved the Spiderwick books and was very excited about making them. And we were able to con kind of convey the ideas of the things that we thought were important in the books and make sure they were conveyed um, into the film. So mm -hmm. I've got a couple things here to show you. Um, one of the big challenges for um, the filmmakers was to take the vertical format of the books and then turn it into the widescreen format that we're all so uh, familiar with when we see a movie or watch a DVD at home. So this is the, um, I'm gonna show you a few of the sets and how they were changed. This obviously is the Spiderwick Mansion from book one, which was inspired by Holly's house that she grew up in. My decrepit old house. This, oh, New Jersey. Yeah. New Jersey. So here's the final. Spiderwick House on location as it was completed. And you could walk through it, you could walk through all the rooms, and they built it all like that, and then they took it back down. Yeah, that's so no that's longer gone. exists. It's gone. Uh, I'm surprised they didn't sell the house on eBay. Just put the whole, just put a- I would've bought that house. I would've bought it. We would've been bidding against each other. <laughs> Spiderwick 101, you win! <laughs> your congratulations, you're high bidder. You owe us a gazillion million dollars. Um, yeah, actually, Holly's correct. They, the entire first floor was completed. The second floor and the cupola, the tower part, were all used for where camera shots so they could shoot down into the yard and stuff. So that was really fantastic. Because as far as we were concerned, the house was always a character of the Spiderwick books. It had, it had the spirit of, of Arthur Spiderwick in it, and also, obviously, Thimble Tax home. This is a shot from book one as well. This is where Jared enters Arthur Spiderwick, uh, his secret study, where he does all his, his work. Um, if, if anybody here is knowledgeable of the history of children's books, Arthur Spiderwick was modeled after turn of the century Victorian illustrator Arthur Rackham. And the uh, resemblance is, is well, it, it, yeah. it's uncanny, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Deliberately so uncanny. Here, here, here's Holly and I actually in Arthur Spiderwick's study, and you can see we are like stunned. Like, let's do it, yeah, let's reenact like... it. Oh my gosh, they built, it. they built the whole thing. <laughs> Look, they've even got the painting. <laughs> and I'm actually kind of squinting because I've stuffed so many props down my pants and I'm trying to steal. <laughs> they, they never caught me. Actually, a really cool piece of trivia. We were there when they filmed all the sequences where Jared goes up in Arthur's study for, the, for that week and he sees Thimbletack for the first Simon! time. Simon! Yes, he, kept he did it like a hundred times. Simon! He's watching Simon getting dragged into the woods. And they, they, they hit a copy of the actual uh, Spiderwick field guide on, on the set. So there's a little, little piece of trivia there amongst his National Geographics and whatnot. Here's a finished shot of Arthur Spiderwick's study. They actually finished the whole thing. Everything yeah. was to the nth, the, the detail was crazy, right? It was amazing you could open a drawer and inside the drawer would be things, even if the drawer would never be opened in the movie. But not only that, but inside those things would be other things. They had a, a box um, and you could, and inside it they had, you know, little natural history things, uh, you know, bits of owl stuff. <laughs> yeah. And it was really uh, just amazing. One of the last sets that we thought were, was phenomenal is the goblin camp, where the goblins live and they capture um, Simon, obviously, put him in a cage, and there, in, in the attempt to rescue his brother, Jared meets uh, the ever-loving hog squeal. Uh, Who is my... really funny in the movie. He is he's <laughs> really... And then here's the actual set in progress being being built. And if you look to the, um, well, let's see, my right, your left, my right, you'll see a uh, you'll see a construction table with a little model of the tree on top of it. And to the other end, you'll see the uh, girdered version of the tree. So they're reinforcing it with steel beams that would then be wrapped in plaster and then rubber so that he could you know climb. And about yeah, it. and that the the steel tree is the one. That's the one that Freddie's going to be in, and the others are not quite so uh, well reinforced. And you guys look at, I mean, it looks kind of cheesy and fake, right? It's kind of like, ah, we, I remember when we were watching them build it, we're like, okay, all right. But then it's amazing when they were done and then when you light it just right, it's amazing. The transformation is absolutely amazing. And the other thing is, if you look at that, you have to realize that somebody was up there wrapping those little leaves. Like, okay, <laughs> five. Seven, 342, <laughs> like. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people ask what it's like, that, that kind of, there was a strange overwhelming feeling that hit me many times. We would talk about something like the Goblin Camp or the Spiderwick House. I would go out and shoot photographic reference, maybe on an afternoon, just some quick stuff, or go on the internet or, or have books of trees that I liked. And I would probably then spend maybe a day or two at the most doing these drawings for the book. And then here you saw crews, literally of hundreds of people, working on these sets. And literally when you see it in the movie, Jared's like just running through it. It's just <laughs> unbelievable the amount of talent. And they were all artists in their own right. 
So I just, that, that is such an overwhelming feeling to see something that was like this little nugget of, of inspiration for us that we kind of. Well, and too, I mean, being on the set, you know, I kept thinking, oh, I'm on the set of a movie. <laughs> this is, I won a contest. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, oh, right, I'm on the set of our movie. Yes, yes. <laughs> so um, these, these uh, characters, uh, after the sets were all created, um, obviously, the thing that I know I was the most excited about being a, a total like effects and like I grew up on Star Wars, I'm a huge Star Wars junkie, was the, um, the creatures. Oh, how were they going to do all the goblins and the fairies and stuff? So these two uh, fellows that I'm posing with, the guy uh, right next to me with the curly hair is Pablo Hellman. He's the head of Industrial Light and Magic, who does special effects. He did uh, the Pirates of the Caribbean. He did Lemony Snicket, worked on the Star Wars movies. Uh, and behind him is Phil Tippett who is an old Star Wars. If anybody remembers The Empire Strikes Back, the Snow Walkers. That, that was like the best scene of all. Wait, 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 hold on. I saw like three people raise their hands for Empire Strikes Back, like the best, best movie of all time. Thank you, thank you. Thanks for the double wave in the back, too. That's what Surely I'm talking about. Surely there's more. Empire, no love for Empire. What? Um, Phil Tippett actually did the Snow Walkers and stuff in The Empire Strikes Back, and he also did all the dinosaurs in Jurassic Park, so we couldn't be more I was totally like, <laughs> and that's why he's making that face. Yes, hence the face you see. That's a. Uh, <laughs> I'm also wincing because I have once again shoved models of fairies and goblins down my pants, and I'm trying to smuggle it's them out. It's amazing they let us just walk around like that unattended. <laughs> oh my God, I've seen all I can see. I've gotta go to the car. Ah, I'll be back. Yes. <laughs> Um, a lot of people, um, it, the amazing thing was they, they really loved the designs that we had come up with for a lot of the fairy characters. One of my big goals as the illustrator for the Spiderwick books was to take goblins and trolls and dragons and fairies, things we've seen a lot of over the course of our lifetime in movies and video games and books, and really make them like different, kind of give them a different spin, make them look as real as I could. And so I obviously referenced a lot of natural history in the case of uh, this bull goblin, I used a lot of angler fish and toads. And I had a little pug dog named Goblin who, who always made her way into a lot of these. And um, a lot of the special effects guys just love these. And so it was amazing to see the transformation. This is the, the, the actual computer model of the bull goblin from the movie before. <laughs> After. <laughs> you love that thing. <laughs> I like that he's back there hitting the buttons. <laughs> ah, yeah, stop. Uh, here's some more. Ah, Thimble Tack. Uh, our man Thimble Tack from book one. And here he is with the two mice. Uh, Thimble Tack went through a, f a little bit more changes physically because unlike uh, the books where I never, I chose not to show Thimble Tack as a bogger. I think you see one shot where he's kind of like a, like a see, homeless yeah. person, kind of hunched up, but I never showed him. And the boggarts that we generally draw, like these real pointy-nosed, kind of little witchy-looking things. So they, they, they took some of the roundedness of Thimble Tack and they made it just a little pointier so that when he turned into the bogger, it seemed more natural, which I thought was brilliant. It was kind of like, why didn't I think of that? <laughs> ah! So there's Thimble Tack from the film In Arthur's Study. Ah, the fairies. This, is, this, was a, this was a super big challenge when I did the books. I felt that of all the creatures in Spiderwick universe, the fairies were going to be the toughest to do because they've been rendered so many times. We've all seen little girls with, with wings on their back. We've seen flower fairies. Um, I was greatly inspired by um, uh, a fellow by the last name of Fitzgerald who was a Victorian oh. fairy painter back in the day, and he used a lot of little bits of leaves and insects and, and carapaces and stuff, and I just love the idea of that. And the, the filmmakers really love that idea, too, as, as evidenced by this fairy. This is one of uh, Lucinda's fairies coming out of her flower box. So sweet. Then she gives her the forbidden fairy fruit. And... Don't make you never eat anything else again. <laughs> um, I didn't see if I got any more uh, monsters. Oh, yes. <laughs> Mogarath. I was actually, I thought it'd be funny to just put Nick Nolte's like mugshot after this. <laughs> uh, you know, he might see this, he's got kids, that's, that's it, no more Spiderwick. So, but he kind of, uh, <laughs> sorry. Um, uh, <laughs> Mogarath, whereas the fairies and a lot of the, 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 uh, the fairies and a lot of the more benign fairies, mm -hmm. 
were very uh, colorful. They, they had like bright flowers and insects. What I wanted with Mulgarath was, was this kind of the opposite. These kind of, the colors are drained out of him. He's kind of uh, dead and he's lost a lot of that color. The, the antlers are kind of dead tree branches and so on and so forth. And uh, once again, the, the filmmakers uh, really liked that idea and they kind of ramped him up more. He's yeah. definitely a lot more intense in the He's a dashing fellow. Yes. You think? Give me your money. <laughs> and in the in the department of why why didn't we think of that? Um, the more angry he becomes, the more his sort of horns and uh, branches on his head grow. Yeah. Which is really clever and um, really looks fantastic. Yeah. They really it's it's amazing. So we had a thematic element. Anyone who's following the thematic element of Spider. The first five books deal with Jared Grace, and he has he has anger issues because his family is is sadly uh, coming apart. And he doesn't and know what to do with them. He doesn't he know feels. what to do with them. Thimbletack, when he gets angry, becomes Bogart. He doesn't sometimes always know what to do with it. And in this case, what the movie makers thought would be really cool would also would be the same would hold true for Mulgrath. So the right. more angry Mulgrath the more gets, he loses control of his the body. more he loses control of his body. And so that was just really, really, it's a spectacular scene. You know, it, it is rare. We, we, we did talk to some other children's book people. Mm -hmm. Not always do, do the people, whether it's in children's or not, does the author get a chance to, to work with the filmmakers to, to bring a, uh, a vision like this to life. And we realized the more Spiderwick kind of continued on in production, the more fortunate I think we realized yeah. we were to be able to have a little bit of a, of a, of a sneak peek and be able to whisper and, and maybe comment on some of the things as the filmmakers took this. Because what you're doing is you're taking something that Holly and I held very dear to us that we kind of collaborated on, and you're kind of handing it over to another team of people and letting them kind of take it and do, do their thing. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, you're nervous, you get a little scared, you're, you're afraid that it'll, you know, crash and burn, but um, we, regardless of what kind of money or how well or big the movie does, we both were really, really pleased with the end result. And I think you guys will be too. So you have an intrigue, you've brought out an intriguing pad. I have brought a giant pad of paper. I, uh, we haven't done this in a while, but we thought it would be, we'd be kind of fun to do, um, which is basically make me earn my, my peanuts and, and draw for you guys. Is that something you'd maybe? Or river dance. <laughs> I can river uh, you dance. You did promise you would river dance. I told you I'd river dance, and there was a little river dance. Is there anything else? It's like I lost a bet or something. It's like <laughs> so um, what we thought would be really kind of fun is um, I love to draw, and what uh, Holly thought would be really cool is to maybe do some, some trivia questions. Indeed. And if somebody gets the trivia question right, guess what? eBay material, my friends. <laughs> yes. Or if you have art class homework, I'll do your homework for you. So, um, maybe I'll do it when you are, do it, do and it, then, it. yeah. Should we go over hand-raising techniques or anything like Absolutely. that? Absolutely. Right, I so love hand-raising techniques. Yes, hand-raising techniques. So, I the way this generally works is, Holly, I'll, I'll be drawing so you can see what the prize is, if it's even worth your, your energy to raise your hand. Um, why I'm drawing, yeah, I know. So, yeah, I'm tired. Yeah. Um, oh, it's just a head scratch. It's just a drawing. <laughs> um, while, I'm, uh, while I'm drawing it, Holly's going to ask you a trivia question. The first person to get their hand up, she will pick. Now, we've seen quite a few different hand raising techniques over the years, haven't we? Indeed we have. Yes, there's the obvious. Right, 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 right. And they do come up so fast. Yeah, Holly, it's really, yeah. It's, Holly, it's Holly's good. visions, so, so good. So you're gonna have to involve some techniques. There's the, the wave, pick me, pick me. There's the double wave. There's the point. <laughs> The point sometimes is almost, and the wave to me is like, I have to go to the bathroom actually. Yeah. And if you don't pick me, we're gonna have a serious problem. <laughs> Especially the double hand wave. Yes, yes. There's the yes, like you're bringing the plane in. There's the, which says, I've had my hand up so long that my arm is actually tired and I'm supporting it with my other hand. That's how long I've known this answer. But I would say the end all be all, best hand raising technique is when you get the people around you to sacrifice raising their hands and instead actually point to you while you raise your hand. Point, raise, pick her. No, don't pick me. It's okay. I don't need the drawing. I don't need the money from eBay. Pick her. Pick her. Pick her. That is the best hand raising technique I've ever seen. So now you're armed. You have the knowledge. So I will start with drawing numero only. We'll see how it goes. Drawing a little round head. 
Holly, what's the what's the question? You're waiting. You're pondering. I'm you waiting. Think, oh, I want waiting. you to be able to discuss what you're doing. I oh, okay. Wanna, so I want them um, to be a lot of people um, crazed. Actually, I've drawn some of these guys like, enough times that I can kind of do them without little con construction lines. Construction lines would be like in, if you guys have seen like in comic books where they're like, to draw a superhero, you draw a stick figure, and then you draw a circle and a huge chest, because that's what superheroes have. <laughs> and we do this, and it is, and it is. Wait, what's that? That's a leg. Yes, definitely, that's a leg. <laughs> right, right, right. That, well, you know, Thimble Tack or Hog Squeal are kind of the same way. It's just Hog Squeal is more like a triangle, because he's kind of fat. <laughs> He's got little bat ears and, a, you know, and Ferd, give me, I, I have stolen your teeth. Um, the thimble tack is also round, and he's kind of like, like almost like a snowman, round, round, a round nose, round eyes, round smile, little round hat, little lanky arms, legs, right? Like, see, like your grandpa. Uh, to put a cane, a little walker. <laughs> That little tag that they hang on their thing when they park in the handicap <laughs> section. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, okay. So I don't need those. I've done it enough now that I can actually, I can kind of just do it. So here, here's his little nose, his smiley. Well, he's brownies, you know. Let's just see here. This is the other thing you do when you're artist, is what I do a lot, Steele. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> bring, bring. No, it's not ready yet. I'm still wor wait. It's almost done. No, I'm gonna need more time. So here's Simple Tech's eyes, little mouse eyes, mouse eyes, little little uh, little crow's feet around the eye. Oh, his ears. He's got those little mousey ears. Let's see, his little nose. He looks like he got hit by a car. Oh, he's okay. <laughs> he's, okay. he's okay. All right, all right, all right. Here's his little hat. Oh, and his little, uh, that little, yes, yeah, the needle and the thread. <laughs> Thimble tax signed by Tony D. I will put whoever wins their name on it, and of course, Holly can sign it too. What year is it? 2006? Eight. Eight. <sighs> all right. All right, Holly, are All right, you ready? Are you ready? We, uh, all hands down. And I'm going to walk back here. Our first item I need, for I need, a, I need a, a good view. OK. OK. What is the name, the first name, of Jared, Simon, and Mallory's mother? All right, think about it. Think about it. Hands down. OK. One, two, three. Hollister. Helen. Helen. Hey. Very nice, very nice. Do you want, would you like your name on it? Yeah. Yes, what's your name? Nathan. Nate. Drawn by Nathan. N -A -N. And Tony D helped. A little. Well, a lot. No, a little. There you go. Hang it on your fridge. Tell everybody what you drew, and then watch me rip it in half. <laughs> I ripped my drawing. There you go, Nathan. Yay. Should we play? Should we play again, Nathan? Should we do one more? You sure? Would you, Would you not? Would you raise your hand the second time around too? Would you try to win too? You would, because that's how you roll. <laughs> I like it. It's good. You go. Go. Good luck with that. All right. Here we go. I'll draw one more. All right, Mulgrath. Draw here away, we go. Mr. Dito Lizzie. I will take it away, and I'll sit on the stool. Also, lots of circle. When you draw the Marvel way, <laughs> you know, a big circle. And then ha happy little trees in the background. Happy trees, happy trees, happy. <laughs> Somebody wasn't hugged a lot as a child. <laughs> Somebody poked out one of his eyes. <laughs> and that is how you draw Mograth. OK, here we go. <laughs> Mograth, Mograth, big kind of hit in the pasta. I will do the band, the branches growing, I promise. Oh, you're, you sound like my art director slash editor. Do this, do that. Or slash Holly. Okay, eyebrows, big kind of I will take over the world. That big kind of I see you, I have. 
eye of Soren kind of eye. Okay, um, okay, and then these kind of crazy bad hair. De yes, there's lots of hair product that Mogarath. Yes, this is beyond bedhead. And when I was a kid, they called it moose, but you know. All right, and then he has lots of raggy. Oh, and he's got ratty hair. You know, Mulgarath loves Metallica. He's got that kind of Metallica hair going. <laughs> We're off to Never Never Land. All right, Mulgarath. I will sign it. Tony D. What year is it? 2009? Hey, just checking. Ah, they go so quick. All right, Holly, do you have your trivia question ready? I'm ready, but I realize it doesn't stress you out, so you can pick. Oh, right. okay. But here's the question What's the first name of Jared, Simon, and Mallory's dad? Ooh, you guys ready? Three, two, <laughs> one, go. In the camouflage. Yep. Richard! Yes, 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 yes. All right, what's your name? Zachary. Zachary, Zachary, Zach, Z-Man, Z-Dog. Z-Man, all right. For Z-Man. Here you go, one drawing of Mulgarath. All right, Z-Man, here you go, dude. I hope you get a lot of money for it on eBay. Thank you. All right, California, thank you. Good night. <laughs> Should we do one more? Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The parents are like, um. <clears throat> All right, we'll do one more. Is there anything that you particularly want to draw? The fairy. <laughs> <laughs> Not the unicorn? <laughs> I like the fairies. All right, here we go. He loves the unicorn. I do, I love the fairies. Let me see if I can. It is kind of elfy. <laughs> so we gave the fairies kind of a human face, and then we gave them kind of like the little bug antenna. And then I made, instead of hair, I gave them these like flower petals. I thought that would be kind of cool. And then the little little pollen and stuff. And then the next come down. So there we go. Portrait of a fairy. There we go. What year is it? Oh, I got it. All right. Here we go. One more for the road. Fairy. Holly, okay. got a question? I do. All right. Without looking at them, if you have them, what are the titles? of the first five Spider-Wick books. Dad's <laughs> On your mark, get set. Yeah. <laughs> I see the hand raising technique of all hand raising techniques in the blue jacket. Yes? Um, all five books, ready, book one. The Field Guide, Thank The Seeing Stone, Lucy Down a Secret, yep. The Iron One Tree, and The Wars of Magra. There we go! Thank you, thank you. I would suggest making a cape out of this. <laughs> Running around the schoolyard as fast as you can. There you go, thank you, Charlie. Thank you guys for playing. Thank you, thank you, thank you. There are days I love to draw, and there are days then it becomes your job and you have to do it. And then it takes a little while, but once you get going, you're getting your groove, listening to some good music and stuff. Um, but it is a, um, a Awesome, awesome opportunity to be able to do what we do for a living. And yes. that is due in no small part to, to folks like yourselves who support us through, through our books. So thank you for reading our books. Thank you guys very much. Thank you for coming out. Thank you.